thank you Kay and, um, and Lois for your part in our service this morning and I'm grateful to be back again um, filling in for Andrew while he's having a good time hopefully catching up with family. Um, as he spoke to me earlier about this Bible reading I spent a few days just thinking about it and I was mulling over the the passage it's quite a drastic passage when you think about it quite a challenge to us and um, I was just working in the study clearing up um, with the thought in my mind about what this passage dwells on and I came across this book which seemed to me an omen of what we're dealing with it's called the Penguin Book of Symptoms and Early Warning Signs, a Companion, a Comprehensive New Guide to Self-Diagnosis. Um, we're not going to be dealing with self-diagnosis in the physical sense this morning, but really what the author of this passage was directing us to do was to take ourselves through a spiritual self dialysis or a self-examination and he's inclined to say that when it comes to someone like me it's not going to look too good and perhaps that's true for you as well the the issues that really strike us most on this subject are those that have to do with how we respond to what God says to us in his word and I find that what he's saying in this passage does point to the importance of what is necessary in the beginning of Christian's life. He says it's fundamental, it's important to be faithful to the fundamentals and it's necessary for us to understand the basics of what our faith is all about. But if we stop there, our progress as a Christian is going to be severely limited and I as I looked at this passage I looked at these two challenges do I exist as a Christian on the milk of God's word or am I feeding on the meat of God's word the challenge that confronts all of us really on those two contrasts is that there are, as we think about it from week to week, there are moments when we seem to have made the same mistakes, we've been guilty of the same failures, we've perhaps neglected towards, we've shown neglect towards the correction that we know we should have made about past failures, we perhaps concluded that we've only been making a superficial appraisal of what God's word is saying and that's what the author is directing his audience to dwell on when he says the words that are drawn to our attention in this passage while I was thinking about it it occurred to me that there's a significant contrast between what we think about God and what God thinks about us and I dwelt for a while on Psalm 139, which tells us the things that God knows about us. Lord, you have searched me and known me. You understand my thoughts are far off. When I get up in the morning, you're aware of what's happening. And when I lie down at night, you know all about that as well. As he goes on through 20 odd verses on that passage, talking about what God knows about us and how we understand his life is invested in us. But then he comes to the last two verses and he does what I think I need to do more often and I hope you feel so too. He says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and assess my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting in other words lead me in the way rather than the negative negative. and as I dwelt on that 
it occurred to me that there are so many challenges in God's word that tells us that we need to go on beyond the elementary areas of our faith that it's important that we don't overlook them because it's all too possible to go on as we are without a great deal of thought not growing deeper in our understanding of God the God who knows us so completely and so I want to share with you some scripture passages that talk about the challenge that goes alongside of that which we found here in this passage in Hebrews. First of all, I want to come to 2 Corinthians chapter 13. And in verse 5 in that chapter, the Apostle Paul says, Examine yourselves to see whether you're in the faith. Test yourselves so that you can realise that Christ really is living within you. Or perhaps you will find that that's not evident. Now I've changed those words a little to make the meaning clearer. But the challenge is to examine ourselves and to see whether we are truly continuing in the faith that we've chosen. And then, of course, in Ephesians chapter 5, the Apostle says this, Be careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And then if we go a little further, we come to Romans chapter 15 and we see a more positive outlook expressed when examination is being made. Romans chapter 15 and uh, verse 14. I myself am convinced, my brothers, that you yourselves are full of goodness, complete in knowledge, and competent to instruct one another. I've written to you quite boldly in some points as if to remind you about them again. In other words, there are things that the Apostle Paul was able to see that were commendable in the life of those whom he brought to the Christian faith. That you yourselves are full of goodness, complete in knowledge, and like, like this last one, and competent to instruct one another. For you see, the contrast to all of those positives that those challenges are directed toward is what's laid out here in Hebrews chapter 6. It's possible, it is impossible for those who once being enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the coming age, if they fall away to be brought back to repentance. And that really is the challenge I want to leave with you today as I take it to my own heart. The danger that I have in prizing and evaluating the things that God has given me can be lost as I get caught up in the affairs of this world around me. And the challenge that is there is mentioned in Paul's letter to Timothy, the second letter, and, um, and the third chapter. I'm not going to read all of this story that's so sorry, but I'm going to read enough of it for you to understand the seriousness of what we confront. But mark this, there will be terrible days or terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient, and so on, and right down to the end, having a form of godliness, but denying its power. That is the risk that we have as Christians that the writer to the Hebrews is really expressing or, or underlining. There is the danger that if we do not continue, if we do not continue to grow in our understanding of who Jesus is, and more like him as a consequence of that, the obverse will happen. 
and we'll be caught up in the affairs of the people of this life and drawn away into the interests and affections that they have. And that'd be a terrible shame for those who came to understand and know the love of God to have drifted away from employing it in their lives. As I look to the epistle of Peter, I see a contrast that is presented in the last words of his second letter, where he says with a great challenge that really can stir our hearts, grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. To him be glory forever and ever. And the only way we can grow in grace, as I, as I understand it, is to take what God's word says and put it in application to the things that happen in our lives. In order to do this, I believe that we need to do more than just read our Bibles. The important thing I've tried to encourage Christians ever since I've been involved in, in, Christian, uh, in, in training Christians in the way of Christian life, or new Christians, is first of all to look at the reading and understand what it says for us today. Then having thought about that and put it in common comprehension, the second thing to do is to say, what does it say to me? What is there specific in this passage that God wants me to act upon? And the most important question of all is what am I going to do about it? And I encourage you, if you don't do so now, in your Bible reading time, to have a piece of paper and a pen nearby and be able to note something in response to each of those issues that you can then put away in your memory to put into practice and into some degree of application. When Peter talked about growing in grace, he had something to say earlier in his, um, in his letter, the second letter, and it's verse eight. But um, before I talk about that, I want to give you an illustration that is able to underline that even more so. If you're as old as I am, or not quite as old as I am, you'll be able to remember that there was a department store in Sydney at one stage called Anthony Hordens. And they had this motto on their stationery there was a picture of a tree like a Morton Bay fig, strong and sturdy and spreading. And underneath the picture was the words, while I live, I'll grow. You know, the sad thing today about that is that Anthony Hortons don't exist anymore there hasn't been that growth that made it possible for reasons that are beyond me. But that's the sad fact of the story. What Peter says, in order to, for us to grow, it requires these things. Make this very, this, for this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to, bre and to brotherly kindness, love. And then he, he makes the point of it all when he says, for if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Key thoughts that came out to me out of that passage in Hebrews. First of all, there was the sense that the people who were being described in this passage were people who could understand by constant use 
how they could train themselves in distinguishing between good and evil. And the last verse in the passage says, the last couple of verses, we want each of you to show this same diligence to the very end in order that your hope, you may make your hope sure. We don't want you to become lazy, but to imitate those who through pace, faith and patience inherit what has been promised. I don't want to get to the day when I stand before my Saviour and hang my head in shame because I didn't apply what I knew. There'll be others who won't have to be ashamed because they didn't know. But I will if that day comes. So help us, I pray. May God help us all to apply solid food in such a way as it will be those who by constant use demonstrate in our lives so we know the difference between good and error. Amen.